Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certifications. We are in chapter one talking about the introduction to AI and uh, we'll be continuing ahead today with our next segments 1.5 AI development framework and 1.6 hardware of AI based systems. To get started, the very first thing we are talking about is AI development frameworks, which in turn tells you that what kind of frameworks are available for us to get started with building up our AI based systems. Of course, there are certain frameworks available, just like when you talk about mobile application development, we do have Android frameworks available for us to do the, you know, uh, base needful jobs in order to build uh, setting up and system in order to behave accordingly similarly when it comes to AI based systems there are frameworks available which would be helping you to build a lot of activities related to AI based systems so there are many AI development frameworks available right now some of which are focused on specific domains as well which caters the need of the industry today now, these frameworks basically supports activities like data preparation, algorithm selection, and compilation of models to run on various processors such as CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. Where CPUs, of course, you know the central processing units which we get in the ordinary systems, GPUs uh, for the graphical processing units, and cloud tensor processing units, which are TPUs. We'll be talking deeply about all of these uh, as we proceed ahead. Don't forget this chapter is just to give you a quick outline that well, what you can expect in the upcoming sessions or throughout this entire syllabus. The selection of particular frameworks may also be dependent on the particular aspect, such as programming language used for the implementation and its ease of use. There are following fair frameworks are some of the popular examples which you can have it as a reference to understand that what kind of frameworks are we talking about. So we got Apache MXNet, which is a deep learning open source framework used by Amazon for Amazon Web Services, in short, AWS. Then we have CNTK, which is Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit. It stands for you know, CNTK is an open source deep learning toolkit as well, of course, from the Microsoft. IBM Watson Studio, now a suite uh, of tools that support the development of AI solutions. Keras, a high level open source API written in the Python language, capable of running on the top of TensorFlow on CNTK. Now PyTorch, of course, for the Python, so an open source ML library operated by Facebook and used for apps applying image processing and neural language processing, which is NLP, and support is provided for both Python as well as C++ interfaces. Now we do have Scikit-Learn, an open source machine learning library for Python programming language, and TensorFlow, an open source ML framework based on the data graphs, uh, data flow graphs for scalable machine learning provided by Google. Now, if you see, if we talk about Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, or you know Google, they all all have their frameworks available for you to get started with, in order to build and train your AI-based systems, which in turn will uh, be dependent on certain specific languages and specific you know domain perspective. So you must look forward to understand each of these frameworks in a way that you have the complete understanding of what exactly would it do in terms of meeting the desired expectations, right? So let's look ahead. The next thing we are talking about today is hardware for the AI-based systems. Of course, when it comes to building up the AI-based systems, there are certain specific hardware's requirement and uh, we must be uh, aware of what kind of hardware requirements would the AI-based system would need in order to build them up and you know, make them available in order to work. Will that be just like any other AI based system or any other applications? Of course not. Given that these are some specific type of applications and products, you certainly need some specific demands on the hardware side. So a variety of hardware is used for ML model training and model implementation. The models are basically the core part of your AI based systems, which consist of all the information. And of course, we'll be talking about this ML models, which are basically your machine learning models. 
Now, for example, a model that performs speech recognition may run on a low-end smartphone as well, although access to the power of cloud computing may be needed to train it. A common approach used when the host device is not connected to the internet is to train the model in the cloud and then deploy it to the host device. That means locally you use a lot of information and a lot of uh, hardware specifications in order to get uh, AI-based systems up and ready for use. Of course, when you talk about the speech recognition, which is your voice command, when you say, hey, CD, or when you say, you know, okay, Google, or Alexa, then these do not really need a very high-end hardware systems to be available and can really work over a smartphone also, which has minimal hardware at this point of time. But when it comes to work on some complicated things, they may need an extraordinary hardware setup so that they can operate well. So initially, they can be you know trained locally without being connected to any you know environment, and later it will be de deployed on a host device. Now, ML typically benefits from the hardware that supports the following attributes. For example, the low precision arithmetic, which means this uses uh, fewer bits of com computation, which includes eight instead of thirty-two bits, and this is usually all that is needed for the ML. The ability to work with large data structures, which is kind of like working on 5x5, five 10x10 by five, by ten matrices and multiplication of them, which is really complicated. And massively parallel concurrent processing. So there might be many people and parallel executions of different transactions happening. So you need someone or some environment which can handle that. And of course, uh, parallel processing could be like, you know, depending on your... PC experience also, when you work on a desktop or laptop, you do understand that how many applications can you run in parallel when you have a limited memory available. But when you are on the high-end computer configurations, you pretty much understand that you can run more services at the same time without any kind of delay or response time lag. So the same response point we are talking about when it comes to AI-based systems, there will be several transactions taking place at the same time and we just can't compromise with the requirement on the hardware and we should look forward to have all the fulfillment done in terms of hardware too. Adding more on this, uh, of course, we are continuing to understand how exactly these uh, environments can be built up or hardwares can be set up. So general purpose CPUs provide support for complex operations that are not typically required for ML applications and only for a few, only for, you know, uh, for a few cores. So you generally get like, you know, quad core, dual core, uh, hexa core, octa core processors, which is enough for your laptop and PCs. But of course, when it comes to AI based systems, we would need more cores, right? So as a result, their architecture is less efficient for training and running ML models when compared to GPUs. So for PCs, you can use CPU, or if you want your smartphones to do some of the basic narrow AI implementations, all you need is a simple CPU and that would do the job. But when you're talking about highly complicated things like playing a game and that to multiplayer with, you know, people playing from different locations at the same time, then CPU is just not enough. You need a GPU, which is more of like graphical processing units, which has better capabilities to deal with such operations. Now these have thousands of cores, okay, just not octa-core or hexa-core right? You have thousands of cores and which are designed to perform the massively parallel but relatively simple processing of images. Now, as a consequence, the GPUs typically outperform CPUs for ML applications. So just because we have GPUs available, you can exclude the CPU to be considered into your account for training the ML applications. Even though CPUs typically have faster clock speeds, it does not make sense. For small scale ML work, GPUs generally offer the best option, right? So even for a small scale ML, okay, we need GPUs to be available. Now some hardware is specially intended for AI, such as purpose-built application specific integrated circuits, which we call it as ASICs and uh, system on chip, which is SOC. Now these AI specific solutions have features such as multiple cores, special data management, and the ability to perform in-memory processing. That means 
within the you know internal memories doing all the work uh, well managed they are most suitable for edge computing while the training of the ml model is done in the cloud hardware with specific ai architecture is currently under development because uh, considering that we are talking about something very recently being built uh, the team is still looking forward to find better uh, you know hardwares to support the ai architectures to be built so this includes uh, neuromorphic processors which do not use the traditional one newman architecture but rather an architecture that loosely mimics brain neurons so at this point of time we are uh, currently talking about narrow ai the moment we move into the advanced ai or super ai we would need a really uh, you know amazing hardware to deal with imitating human brains in order to make decisions on their own. Also to add examples of various AI hardware's providers and their processors include as of today is Nvidia. They provide a range of GPUs and AI proce specific processors such as Volta. Google, they have developed application specific integrated circuits for both training and inf inferencing. The Google TPUs, which are of course cloud tensor processing unit, can be accessed by users on the Google Cloud, whereas the HTPUs is a purpose-built ASIC uh, designed to run AI on individual devices. Intel is again another provider for the hardware. They provide Nirvana Neural Network Processor for deep learning and Movidius Merit Vision Processing Units for inferencing in computer visions and neural network applications. Now Mobileye uh, they produce the IQ family of SOC devices to support complex and computationally intense vision processing. These have low power consumptions for the use in vehicle. So again, if you talk about any kind of automatic sensors which are working to make decisions on braking or reducing your speeds based on the sensors, yes, of course, we are looking forward to talk about those things using the IQ. And of course, this is again provided by Mobileye. Apple also has one of these providers there for the hardware. They produce the Bionic chip for on-device AI in iPhones. Now, what iPhone supports with AI? Of course, your face recognitions, tracking the changes on your face day to day so that they do not have any kind of drastic differences by, for unlocking your phone using the Face ID. And Huawei, their Quirin 970 chip for smartphones has built-in neural network processing for AI, again, for the Huawei phones. Um, Huawei phones, you really have, you know, some good AI options available there, again, which can be, you know, called as narrow AI, and they do have their uh, Quirin 970 chip to support these basic uh, AI functions. So put together, there are a lot of frameworks for you to explore. There are a lot of uh, hardware requirements which we need to learn and understand in order to train an AI-based system through an ML model. So we'll be looking forward to deep dive into these details later as we continue with our other chapters and understand everything in detail that how these frameworks and hardwares uh, can be really decided, configured, understood in a way that it meets all the desired expectations right so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to contribute you know comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning